Yo, what is up guys, Faze here and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day and today I'm going to be going over that age-old question, which is better, the VK7201K or the E100? I almost liked you there, not the mouse. In this video, I'm going to be going over the E100 and VK72 differences, which tank could possibly be better and why it's better as well as downsides on the better vehicle. With that being said, let's head straight into it. Now, if you'd like to see my full-on E100 review, you can go and watch that by clicking on the link at the top right of your screen. I have already done a full-on review on it, so I'm not going to daddle along too long on the E100. However, for those who care about it, I'm going to be going over the equipment that I run on the VK72, and then I'm going to be showing you guys the armor and how to effectively angle it. First of all, I'm running calibrated shells because the reload on this vehicle is extremely long. Now, yes, if you run gun rammer, it's going to be an entire second quicker and will be about 15.78 seconds long which is a lot better than 17 seconds. However, if that pin is not fantastic, you're not going to wait 15 seconds to actually just bounce the shot very easily. So that would actually really suck. And that's why I run calibrated shells. Moving on, I'm using enhanced gun laying drive. And now for the type of caliber this gun might have, you might say to yourself, why don't you run supercharger? Because it'll increase that shell velocity. At the distance you're going to be playing in the VK72, there's no point in running supercharger and you would actually benefit from running that increased aiming time or decrease in aiming time than you would with the supercharger. So just keep that in mind. I'm running refined gun for obvious reasons, improved modules, which you can change for a uh, defense system, but the improved modules actually increases the track durability. So for a vehicle that is going to be playing frontline, that increase to its track durability is a great help. I'm and then I'm running enhanced armor. For a very good reason, this vehicle has a lot of armor. And for a vehicle like this, in certain parts of the actual armament of the vehicle, this 4% increase can actually mean 20 millimeters increase to the actual overall armor of that section. I'm running enhanced tracks over there as well, just to keep those tracks on instead of braking, improved optics, engine accelerator, and high-end consumables. Now let's head straight into Armor Inspector so we can have a look at the armor and how you should actually angle this vehicle. I do want to note before we get into this that the VK72 will be getting a armor buff on the sides of its vehicle as well as on this little ring and turret. So the armor might actually be more effective in the next updates. I'll definitely do an updated review on this vehicle when that update comes through. So I highly suggest you guys to subscribe to the channel because I'll be going over those updates as well as on every single buff slash rebalance on every other tier 10 vehicle that will be coming out. So definitely suggest you to subscribe, but let's head straight to the VK72's armor. Now this is a E100 shooting heat rounds with calibrated shells enabled. And obviously everyone knows that the E100 and VK72 have very, very good heat penetration when using calibrated shells. It's, it's the amount of penetration that you would usually expect from a tank destroyer. So yeah, this is why the vehicle looks very, very green. And obviously where it's green, it means you can pen it no problem. However, if we switch to AP rounds, which is what most players run, as you can see the VK72, even with calibrated shells, if we switch out calibrated shells, yeah. This vehicle becomes extremely red and it basically means that the enemy team has to shoot heat rounds at you. And if they don't have calibrated shells, they might actually struggle here. But obviously, as soon as they run the heat rounds, they will go straight through this vehicle. So how can we avoid getting penetrated in this vehicle? Now, everyone knows that this vehicle is a rear turreted vehicle. So with common sense, it means that the vehicle will be better at side scraping. However, on the VK72, you cannot side scrape in this vehicle. As you can see, this is the only plate that is actually pretty strong. And then this entirety of the side of the vehicle becomes extremely green. Even here by the track wheel, all of this section here is all green. And that is a 100% penetration if you over angle this vehicle. So you always want to keep this vehicle directly in front of your enemy. And also with your turret, because as you can see, the entirety of the side of this vehicle's turret becomes extremely easy to pin. It's a 100% chance of going through because it's only 186 millimeters thick. And it means that you're going to get absolutely bullied. So you always want to keep the tank directly facing the enemy. Unlike the E100 where you have the most amounts of armor, keeping the tank at about a 21 degree um, angle here. Yeah, with the VK72, it's a completely different ball game. You want to always face the turret directly forward at your enemy. And at this angle, obviously people, if they use heat rounds, they'll be able to go straight through the lower plates. Where on the E100, you can go straight through the lower plates of this vehicle with AP rounds. You don't need to switch out to premium rounds. This means that a lot of newer players will actually struggle to pen the VK72 because not all new players know how to, how premium rounds work. And obviously there are more expensive rounds, so not everyone carries heat rounds, which I highly suggest you to do. Always run your premium rounds for a situation like this because you never know if you're going to go and face a VK72 that has this amount of armor, especially if your penetration is only 258 millimeters thick. 
yeah, you're not going to go straight through it. You need at least 270 to get straight through the lower plate. So only tank destroyers are really going to pen the lower plate of this vehicle with their standard rounds. So just keep that in mind. So let's head straight into a battle in this vehicle. See how we can perform in our first game here live. If we can get into a game fast enough, that will be very nice. And we do manage to do that. And our first game is on Naval Frontier. This is a live game. I do want to say that again. It's not cherry picked. So whatever happens here, happens. And uh, yeah, let's hopefully the VK-72 can pull its weight. Now, as you can see, that reload being extremely long. For 17 seconds, that is extremely, extremely long. And yeah, I don't know. That amount of reload is just, it, it allows you to get some very nice shots out with that very nice alpha. However, when it's time to clear some low HP targets, you kind of regret it because you're shooting a 17 second round at someone who only has a very minimal amount of HP. Yeah, it sucks because you're going to be waiting an entire, you're going to be waiting an entirety to just reload this shot. However, what's nice about the E100 and VK72 is that it has very good HE rounds, which means that you can sometimes hit people for very, very hard. Um, we do manage to get a shot out into that E5 there, but we do get shot by that 60 TP in return. I did just pull out the, around the corner uh, mindlessly there and showed the entirety of the um, side of my vehicle, and that's why I got penned very easily there. Uh, maybe we can uh, juke a shot from this 183. I want to see if I can get a tungsten round, which is something that this vehicle has, uh, into that 183. And oh no, the 60 TP actually blocks my shot there, allowing me to not get a shot out. And now, as you can see, that Jagdpanzer just penned me directly through the side of my vehicle. And because I'm only running one repair kit, it means that he can absolutely bully me for that. 726, I've repaired my Amarak, I think it was, or driver, which is two components that this vehicle loses a lot of. Its driver dies all the time, and its Amarak is usually broken or, or critical, or made critically a lot of the time here. Let's see if we can poke around the corner, snap the shot in there. Now, the VK-72 is not an accurate tank. However, it can get some very, very nice close-up snapshots, which I'm very happy about because they hit very hard. I'm going to keep backing up here so that this E5 doesn't get some free shots into me. I'm going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Obviously, he has to run heat to penetrate me, and he allows me to shoot him directly in the side. I'm not sure what he's doing. There is a light tank on my rear now because my team is playing like absolute dodos, but maybe my 183 over here can assist me with this little light tank buddy over here. I'm actually going to keep pushing here because the entirety of the enemy's heavy tanks are going to be on my rear in just a moment. I'm going to get a little shot into that T100. Does not hit, and that is the one thing about this vehicle. Its accuracy, like I said, is absolutely tremendous. It's absolutely dreadful sometimes, and uh, yeah, you can't hit everything in this tank. Now, that 60 TP gets a shot into my SDB, and the ent entire enemy team is actually low on HP here. However, with that being said, I still want to try to get a shot into the 60 TP if I can. Uh, that will mean the world to me, and there we go. It has 700 roll there. And I don't know about you guys, but this game did not feel like I just did over 3,000 damage. However, that is the case with the VK-72, because it has that tungsten round and that very high alpha which allows you to get some very hard hitting rounds in there i'm going to wait for my tungsten to load up so i can actually shoot a tungsten round into him and we managed to do seven or four thousand damage seven thousand damage i was about to say but yeah that is a long way away right now now there's a 60 tp left and if i can get a round into him i'll be very very happy looks like my sdb gets a shot into him first i'm going to load he which is something you can do in this vehicle to clear low hp targets around 250 hp you can deal with with a this amount of he or alpha and it does not look like we get to put it in him and that is just because it this vehicle is not the fastest tank out there I am kind of happy that the vehicle is going to get improved suspension in the next update, which actually will allow it to get to its top speed and go over very crappy terrain, like on that map, a lot easier. And that mobility buff will actually be a lot better for this vehicle. As you can see, not cherry picked, we did 4000 damage on our first game here, and it allowed us to win this battle. The VK-72 is a fantastic tank, and for someone who actually loves the E100, I don't play it as much anymore, just because I have tanks like the SDB, E6, which are a lot more mobile and versatile and have a lot better uh, guns in terms of that. And, they, and for that reason, they are a lot more fun. However, I do suggest you to grind the VK-72 because it's getting a decent buff in the next update. And as you know, it is a meta vehicle, meaning that it is in tournaments and a lot of people are going to want you to run this vehicle. So definitely suggest you to grind it. It's getting a decent buff. It's 
it's an overall fantastic tank because you require heat to pen this vehicle. No one can pen you with AP rounds if you angle it correctly. And that is one thing that I love about the VK72. We are on the E100. People can just absolutely dominate that lower plate with AP rounds, standard rounds. And yeah, they can bully you for you. They can bully you for that reason. Both tanks have their weaknesses. However, the VK72 is a formidable tank. It racks up damage very, very easily, especially with those tungsten rounds, which I believe are going are not going to be a thing on this vehicle in the future. Unfortunately, I, that is one thing that I love about this tank is that you can run that, especially because its reload is absolutely awful. Uh, one thing I do want to note is that this tank's alpha on its actual gun is going to reduce from 640 to all the way to 600. So. Keep that in mind, some things are getting nerfed and some things are getting buffed, but overall the rebalance I think is a good thing for this vehicle. Let me know what you guys think of the VK72, do you have the vehicle already and how do you actually like playing it? With that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, if you did you can leave a like and subscribe, it really helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. Anyways guys, that's it for me today, hope your shells hit their marks and I'll check you in the next one. Cheers!